Welcome to Flashpoints. I'm Jeff Pegues, joined as usual by CBS News Senior National Security Analyst Juan Zarate. And we wanted to talk about the reorganization that is underway with U.S. law enforcement and intelligence agencies. The CIA announcing earlier this month mm -hmm. that it was uh, going through a major reorganization. And we have now gotten the results of an FBI, it was a 9-11 review commission that took 14 months to, to really analyze how the FBI is operating and whether it is adjusting to deal with the emerging threats that we're seeing. An outside review focused on how the FBI has done in responding to the 9-11 commission recommendations, how the FBI has done in responding to the changing uh, landscape, especially on the counterterrorism front since September 11th. This is really fascinating to me because here you have these threats uh, from ISIS and AQAP and others, uh, and here you have law enforcement agencies in this country trying to adjust. What does that suggest to you? Well, it suggests a changing landscape where not just the FBI, but as you said, Jeff, the CIA and other law enforcement intelligence agencies, not just in the U.S., but around the world, are having to address a, a very a rapidly changing threat environment and landscape uh, amid uh, mountains of information and uh, data, big data, social media, um, and trying to be predictive and preventive uh, in, their, in their approach. Keep in mind that the FBI was given the mission after 9-11 not just to track down uh, criminals after the fact, but to be preventative before uh, a terrorist attack happens. And that meant they had to now have an intelligence function and mission that was much more aggressive than what they had done prior to 9-11. And so what you see in this report and echoes of this report is that that mission still is in formation, that uh, the, the infrastructure to be able to do that kind of intelligence, especially as uh, more criminality, more terrorism may be shifting online, where the actors may be multiple, may be state actors, non-state actors, may be super empowered individuals. All of this makes the landscape very uh, difficult to manage. Uh, and I think that's in part why the FBI will have to be constantly in formation and reformation in this space. Is it, is it odd uh, to you at all that, that the FBI and CIA and other law enforcement agencies in a way, and I don't know if they would agree with this assessment, but in a way is trying to keep up with these threats instead of confront these threats and, and, and get ahead of these threats. Is, is that typical or is, is that unusual? Well, I, I think it's typical in, in, a, in some ways because you do have law enforcement sort of typically following and chasing criminality as it evolves. That's, that's normal. That's normal. I, I think what's happening here though is you have a quickening of threats, uh, both in the terrorism field and in the cyber domain. Uh, where the tools of asymmetry, where an individual or terrorist group can now impact much more aggressively and dynamically and globally, um, either via messaging or with disruptive tools, um, in a way that makes this a real challenge. And so what you have is law enforcement really trying to catch up to technology mm -hmm. and this environment as it shifts. Um, and I don't think it's necessarily the FBI's fault. I think it's part of the challenge, like as, as I said, for law enforcement around the world, mm -hmm. trying to get ahead of the trends where now you have multiple actors operating globally with global platforms able to do damage across borders. You know, that in some ways was the lesson of 9-11 in a terrorism context. We're now starting to see that in the cyber domain and the FBI has a primary role in that. Yeah, and we were, we have been told that you know, these would-be terrorists, they aren't going to the training camps anymore. They're picking up the tips online, which speaks to this effort by the FBI to increase its ranks of cyber agents, if you will. There is a real push to hire people who are skilled hackers, essentially. Yep. Not to break the law, but to uphold the law. Yeah, uh, to, to track the hackers, in a sense. And the challenge there is more and more criminality, just basic criminality, fraud, uh, you know, um, credit uh, card uh, schemes, other things are moving online anyway. So the FBI, even if it were following traditional cr criminal activity, has to follow it online. It's just where it's happening uh, more and more often. But you also have these more dynamic uh, national security related threats happening online. And so you saw the central role that the FBI played in the attribution of the hack of the Sony studios from North That's Korea. The FBI North was Korea. central to that in coordination with the NSA and others. And so more and more of the environment has to do with the ability to understand what's happening online, to be somewhat predictive and to have the tools to be able to attribute either to prevent attacks or to do something about it if it happens to respond. 
And so the FBI has a key role to, to play, and I think that's why you have this, this important review out to talk to those issues. Yeah, as I said, fascinating, I think, the changing face of law enforcement and the intelligence community in this country. For Juan Zarate, I'm Jeff Begays, and that is Flashpoints.